Hey students, this is a video on section 13.4, which is about two important properties of uh, vector functions, curvature and normal vectors. So we've already learned about um, the unit tangent vector in uh, an earlier section, and that's written as capital T. We will be finding that one in this section as well. Um, but the unit tangent vector is this red vector here, and it's tangent to the curve, which means it's pointing directly the way the curve is pointing at that instant. And then the new stuff in this section that we haven't learned yet is capital N. That vector is called the principal normal vector, and that one's also a unit vector. And it's called the normal vector because it's perpendicular to the tangent vector. Remember, normal means perpendicular. Um, so if, as you notice in my picture, the tangent vector and the normal vector are always going to be perpendicular to each other. No matter where you move along the curve, um, the tangent will change direction, but the normal vector n will always be perpendicular to that. Okay? And then the last new thing that we're learning about is called the curvature, and this is a Greek letter kappa. I've never been good at writing this letter down, but it's kind of like the Greek equivalent of a K, okay? And then um, what it means is the curvature tells you how fast the function is changing at a specific point or how curvy it is, okay? Curvature tells you how curvy it is or, or so if the function is doing a lot of little curves and moving around a lot, uh, doing a bunch of loop-de-loops, then the curvature will be higher. Whereas if the function is more smoothed out and kind of straight and not doing a lot of curves, then the curvature will be lower. Okay, so that's actually what it's measuring, is literally how curvy is the graph at that particular point? That's your curvature. Okay, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning the math behind these things. So we're going to learn how to find the principal normal vector uh, with math and also to find the curvature because there are formulas for these. Okay, um, so let me write down some of these formulas. So let's start with uh, the tangent vector, which we already know about. The unit tangent vector T should be a formula that you should already know, or at least remember. So the formula for T is going to be uh, V, your velocity, divided by the length of V. Okay, that's our unit tangent, unit tangent vector. So we already know that one from an earlier section. But we're still going to have to calculate it on every single problem because it's used uh, in the problems. So you need, you need to find the tangent vector first before you can find the normal vector and the curvature. Okay, and then the new thing, one of the new things we're learning here is the normal vector, which is capital N. And that's perpendicular to the tangent vector. So capital N of T has a different formula. It actually turns out that it's the derivative of the tangent vector, so it's dt dt divided by the length of the derivative of the tangent vector. Okay, so it's dt dt divided by the length of dt dt. So in order to calculate the normal vector, first you have to have the tangent vector, you take the derivative of it, and then you divide that derivative by its length, and that gives you your principal normal vector. Okay, so principal normal vector is what we call this. And remember, this one's also a unit vector because if you take a vector and you divide it by its length, it automatically becomes a unit vector. Okay? So that's the formula for principal normal vector. And then the last formula that we need to learn that's new is the formula for curvature. Okay? So again, curvature tells you roughly how much the curve is changing or how much it's curving around, how curvy it is. And we write that with the Greek letter kappa. 
which you can basically just think of as like a K, but it's a Greek letter. And the formula for curvature is 1 over the length of V, 1 over the length of V times the length of dt dt. Okay, and remember this t is actually a vector function. That's also true over here. So t is actually the unit tangent vector, and it's a vector function. So what we have here for our curvature, our curvature is the k, which is kappa, is 1 divided by the length of the velocity, the length of v, times the length of dt dt, which is the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to time. Okay, so it's a lot of formulas here. And you only have six problems on your homework, but they're still going to take you a long time because each problem is so long. Okay? And um, there's a number of problems that I could do. And uh, some of your problems are only going to have two dimensions, so they're only going to have i and j. But then uh, a couple of the later ones will actually have three dimensions, so i, j, and k. So I think the one that I'm going to do is uh, one of the problems in two dimensions. So we're going we're gonna to do an example, and it's going to take a while to write it down. It's going to be a lot of work. So example, find t, so the tangent vector, n, which is the principal normal vector, and kappa, which is the curvature, for the plane curve. When they say plane curve, that means it only has an x and a y. It doesn't have a z. A space curve would mean it's three-dimensional, so it has x, y, and z. A plane curve just means it's two-dimensional. Okay, so we want to find t, n, and kappa for the plane curve. And our plane curve here is r of t equals 12 times natural log of secant of t times i, okay, so that's our first component, plus 12t times j. And here they're giving us restrictions on t. So they're telling us that t, little t, which is representing time, is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Okay, so it's between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. All right. So um, to do this problem, we're going to start by finding t. So what was the formula for t? Well, we've done it before. It's v divided by the length of v. So the first thing we're going to calculate here is v. Okay, so remember that v is the derivative, it's the velocity, so it's the derivative of your position. So that's the same as dr dt. Okay, so here all we have to do is take the derivative of r. Take the derivative of each component of r, and that will give us v. Okay, so for the first component, ln of secant of t is a composite function, so we have to use the chain rule. So we start by taking the derivative of the outer function, which is ln. Remember, 12 is a constant, so it just stays out front. So we're going to have 12 times the derivative of the outer function. Well, the derivative of ln is 1 over. So that's going to give us 12 times 1 over secant of t. All right? So that was the derivative of the outer function. And then we multiply this times the derivative of the inner function. So the inner function is secant of t. And remember that, um, recall that the derivative d dt of secant of t 
is actually secant times tangent. Secant of t is secant of t times tangent of t. And if you ever forget these uh, formulas, you can always look them up online or on uh, some of the formula sheets. I, I might have put up one that has these on it. But probably the easiest way to do is Google uh, derivatives or differentiation formulas on Google. And the derivative of secant of x is secant of x times tangent of x. Okay, so what we're going to have here is we're going to have 12 times 1 over secant of t. That's the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function. So that's going to be secant of t times tangent of t. Okay, so this is going to be times secant of t times tangent of t. Okay, and that's all times i. All right, and then for the second component, the derivative of a constant, sorry, the derivative of a variable is a constant. So this 12t is going to become 12. So we have plus 12 times j. And then for our first component here, we can see that the secant of t's cancel out. So these cross out. So that means our first component is actually just going to be 12 times tangent of t times i plus 12 times j. Okay, so that's v. Now remember, the reason we're calculating v is we're going to need it later in the problem. So looking at these formulas up here, the first thing we need to calculate is capital T, the unit tangent vector. And for that one, we need v, which we just calculated. And then we're also going to need to divide it by the length of v. Okay, so the next thing we need to calculate is the length of v. Okay, so now we have v. I'll underline that. Now let's find the length of v. So remember, to find the length of a vector, it's just the square root of the sum of the squares. So you take the square root, and then you square each component of the vector, and you add them all up. So it's going to be 12. The square root of 12 times tangent of t squared plus 12 squared. Okay? So, um, that's the length of v. Maybe I shouldn't put this line here. It looks confusing. Okay. So that's the length of v. Um, and uh, we need to simplify it a little bit. So squaring, we can distribute this square because these are multiplied together. So 12 squared is 144. So you should have 144 times tangent squared of t plus 144. Okay, and then we have the square root of this whole thing. Now here we can simplify this. We can actually factor out 144 from these two terms. So that's going to give us uh, the square root of 144 times the quantity tangent squared of t plus 1. Okay? And then um, if you don't remember what your trig identities are, again, you can just look online. You can Google stuff or use whatever your search engine is. But for example, here, if you don't remember what tangent squared of t plus 1 is, you can just go on to Google, um, or here it's on Bing. And I'm just going to type in trig identities. Go to trig identities, and you can look it up on Google. This first one that pops up is pretty good. So tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared. Okay, that's under Pythagorean identities. Tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared. So that means we can simplify this. Tangent squared plus 1, and it becomes secant squared of t. So we really have the square root of 144 times the square root of secant squared of t. Okay? And we know that the square root of 144 is 12 from our times tables. And then the square root of secant squared of t is actually going to be the absolute value of secant of t. 
because when you take the square root of a square, it has to always be positive. So that's going to be 12 times absolute value of secant of t. So that square root and the square cancel, and it's technically an absolute value because when you square something, it's always positive. Okay, so the length of v is 12 times absolute value of secant of t. Okay? All right, so um, keep in mind that uh, you don't ever really need the absolute value, though, for these problems because they always have them set up so that um, it's going to be positive anyway. So here they say t is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Well, that's going to be in the first quadrant over here and then the fourth quadrant over there. And in the first and fourth quadrants, it turns out that secant of t is positive anyway, because secant is 1 over cosine, and cosine is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So we don't need the absolute value. And they always have the form, they always have the problem set up that way, as far as I know. So you don't end up, ever end up actually needing the absolute value for these problems on my math lab. But it's good to know that there is an absolute value there. It's just they have them set up so that you don't need it. Okay, so we're just going to simplify it to 12 times secant of t. Because again, uh, we know that t is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And we know that um, secant of t is greater than 0 or greater than or equal to 0 in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4 which is, those are the quadrants that they've limited it to. Okay, and since it's greater than or equal to zero, we don't need the absolute value. So we have the length of v is just equal to 12 secant of t. Okay, so that's quite a bit of work, and we're not even halfway through the problem yet. So these problems are very long, but you only have six of them on your homework. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to have to do... Um, we're going to have to plug everything in to the unit tangent vector formula. So t equals v over the length of v. So we're doing the unit tangent vector now. t equals v over the length of v. Okay. So plugging in here, we already calculated v. And we said that v was 12 tangent of ti plus 12j. So we're going to have 12 tangent of ti plus 12j. That's for v. And then our, in our denominator, we're going to have the length of v. And we just calculated the length of v is 12 times secant of t. So we're going to divide all of this by secant of t. Okay, and uh, we continue from here and we simplify it a little bit. So we're going to have to use trig identities here. So um, remember that tangent is sine over cosine. And we're going to go ahead and distribute this 12 secant of t to each denominator. So we're going to have 12 times tangent, which is sine of t over cosine of t divided by 12 secant of t. Remember that secant is 1 over cosine. So that's going to be over 12 times 1 over cosine of t. And this is all times i. And then for our second component, we have 12 over 12 secant of t times j. But once again, instead of writing secant of t, I'm going to write it in terms of cosine. So I'm going to write it as 1 over cosine of t down there. Okay? And um, we can keep going from here. So, um, so basically, uh, what's going to simplify here on the first fraction is the 12s are going to cancel out. And there's a cosine 
in each denominator. So these cosines are going to cross out. So for our first component, we actually just have a sine of t left over. Okay, so for our first component, we have sine of t times i. Okay, and then for the second component, the 12s cancel out, and then 1 over 1 over cosine just flips it over and moves it to the top. So if you flip over this fraction, you end up with cosine of t in the numerator. So our second component is just going to be cosine of t times j. Okay, so we've got our unit tangent vector t equals sine of t times i plus cosine of t times j. And that was a lot of work, but we needed to calculate it. That was the first thing they asked for, so I'll go ahead and box that. And if you think this is a lot of work, some of your homework problems are even longer. So you're going to have to practice your derivatives and stuff. Um, but there's only six homework questions, which is actually a lot of work. Okay, so that's, that's t. And the next thing we need to calculate, since we calculated the unit tangent vector t, next thing we need to do is find capital N. Now capital N is dt dt divided by the length of dt dt. So now we're going to have to calculate dt dt. Okay, so let's do that. So dt dt means we're just going to take the derivative of each component of t. But this problem is pretty straightforward. The derivative of sine of t we should know is cosine of t. So we have cosine of t times i. And then the derivative of cosine of t is negative sine of t. So we have negative sine of t times j. Okay, so dt dt equals cosine of t times i minus sine of t times j. Okay, and then um, to calculate n, which is the next thing we need to find, looking at the formula, we're going to need to divide dt dt by its length. So we have to calculate the length of dt dt. So let's do that. So the length of dt dt is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares. So that's going to be the square root of cosine squared of t um, plus negative sine of t squared. Okay, but remember when you square a negative, it becomes positive. So this minus is going to cancel out. So we're actually just going to have the square root of cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t. Okay, and then if you remember your Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So this whole thing right here, cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So really, we just have the square root of 1 for our dt dt, and the square root of 1 is 1. Okay, so the length of dt dt is just 1. All right, so now we're actually able to write down our principal normal vector, which is capital N. So capital N, the formula is capital N equals dt dt divided by the length of dt dt. Okay, dt dt divided by the length of dt dt. And in the numerator, the dt dt is cosine of t i minus sine of t, sorry, cosine of t i minus sine of t j. That's our dt dt in the numerator. Cosine of t i minus sine of t j. And then we're dividing this by the length of dt dt. And we lucked out, the length of dt dt was actually just 
1. So here we're just dividing by 1. Not all of your homework problems will be this easy, but this one does happen to be easy here. Okay, so um, any number divided by 1 is the number. So that means our normal vector n here is actually just going to be cosine of t times i minus sine of t times j. Okay. Cosine of t times i minus sine of t times j. And I'll go ahead and box that. And it's interesting, if we look at t, that was sine of t times i plus cosine of t times j. It almost looks the same as n, it's just uh, we have cofunctions here. So we have cosine instead of sine, and negative sine instead of cosine. And because sine and cosine are at right angles to one another, this all works out. So this actually is normal. This is always going to be normal or perpendicular to your tangent vector t. Okay, so we've got our t and we've got our n. So the last thing we need to calculate is the curvature. Now our formula for the curvature is 1 over the length of v times the length of dt dt. Well, we already have the length of v and we also have the length of dt dt. So we're going to plug those into this formula. Okay, but first let's write down the formula. So curvature is kappa equals 1 over the length of v times the length of dt dt. That's our formula for curvature. Okay, and um, so we know that the length of v here, we did that way up here somewhere. Where is the length of v? Okay, so we said the length of v was 12 secant of t. So 1 over the length of v is going to be 1 over 12 secant of t. So we have 1 over 12 secant of t times the length of dt dt. So what did we say the length of dt dt was? Well, fortunately, the length of dt dt was 1, right? We did it up here. Length of dt dt is 1. So we're just going to have 1 over 12 secant of t times 1. And any number times 1 is the number. And then we just want to simplify the secant of t. So remember that secant of t is the same as 1 over cosine. So here for our curvature, we actually have 1 over 12 times 1 over cosine of t. And remember that 1 over 1 over just flips it over. If you're dividing by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So if I flip over 1 over cosine of t, you get a cosine of t on the top. So we actually just get 1 12th on the bottom and cosine of t on the top. So our curvature, which basically tells us um, how fast the, the function is changing or how much curving there is, how curvy it is, the curvature here is 1 over 12 cosine of t. And that was the last thing they asked for. And uh, your homework problems, there's six of them. One of them is almost identical to this one. The other ones can just be take you longer to do the work. But, um, you know, you're just going to have to use some calculus one formulas and stuff. Um, the product rule, that kind of stuff. But it's still the same idea as this problem. It's just they're longer. So hopefully you'll be good for those with this video.